Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to the vlog on what is now turning out to be a sunny Tuesday afternoon. It's been raining actually quite a bit. So, you may notice something. Yes, I decided. You know that last coat of paint that I said I was going to put down? Well, I finally got round to it. Why not? I pulled all the tackle out of this corner and it gave me the perfect time to get it down and what an absolute amazing finish it's put on this brewery floor. Oh, I think it's great. And I'm still going to put another coat down, which is why I'm not moving everything back today. I've actually ordered another two tins. So whilst I think it is definitely good enough and I'm happy as Larry with it, there are a few places that gets a lot of traffic through here where we have the running barrow coming in and outside the front of the cold rooms and I want to make sure that they're going to withstand a few dinks and chips and knocks from 50 litre, uh, 50 kilogram casks if they're accidentally dropped on the floor and then in the section here where we're gloriously illuminated by oh, what appears to be the dimming sunlight, unfortunately. This is the area exposed most to chemicals, mainly caustic and acid from the cleaning process, and then heat from emptying the mash tun. So we normally just let the mash tun drain and it runs down into this corner and away. But where the hot water comes out of the mash tun on the resin coat it left like a I'm trying to form the correct words here it marked the surface it decolorized it it didn't come up didn't flake as you can see around here if I move around so you can see the reflection on the light it was perfectly fine and solid it had just faded a little bit where it discolored where the heat that hot water had interacted with the surface so it's obviously interacted with the pigments so this area i'm going to put an extra thick and durable layer hello madam uh, an extra thick and durable layer so we're going to put another tin down around here just for backup and then we're going to put another tin along this edge. But it ain't going to come till tomorrow. I'm hoping that this paint will still be able to provide a chemical bond with another layer. It hasn't gone off completely. Now this second coat that I put down, I keyed the whole area with a sander, believe it or not. It didn't take me too long. And uh, the, the blue paint turned almost white. And that gave me a mechanical key for the next layer. But it seems to have gone down extremely well. I'm, ex I'm very, very pleased with it. So hopefully we put another layer down. I won't have to key it all again. And then I also came across into this kitchen area. The floor in here was absolutely dire. We were working with uneven surfaces. I had to fill all that in with concrete. You may remember on a vlog perhaps a couple of years ago. And yeah, it's been really quite a long haul to get to a finish like this, but I think it looks glorious. So anyway, welcome along to the vlog, ladies and gents. I'm Harry, and after I've just had that long and drawn out intro about this floor, what we're actually gonna be doing on today's vlog is varnishing the HLT. I just thought best to give you an update as to why you're seeing a brand new floor down. Have we gone back in time or gone forwards in, in, into the future and missed something? Well, you've gone forwards into the future and you've missed me making a video about laying the floor because I did it on Sunday. So the HLT here has a um, little bit of staining from where it butts up to the boil kettle. So when we've got the boil kettle on a cleaning cycle, we occasionally get splashes of caustic coming out. And it's obviously been interacting with the varnish. So we're just gonna give it another coat. 
brighten it up a little bit. Now, thankfully, we were very, very kindly donated some varnish to do the job. So let's pull it out and uh, let's pull it out, sailor. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Not that I know a lot. So here's the stuff. Uh, this was kindly sent to me by Gary. Thanks, mate. I really do appreciate it. Now, he calls it lacquer, not varnish. If you look how thin that is, it really is thinner than I would have anticipated it being. Premium wood floor finish with outstanding performance. Water-based, universal, medium traffic areas. Well, we're going to put some on the boil kettle, which obviously is not a floor. But nevertheless, we want to have the best finish on there that we can. On the HLT, should I say, not the boil kettle. But I will... Put it on the bowl kettle as well. So let's just open this up and have a look. What's underneath? I don't know. Oh, it's just instructions in other languages. Well, we don't need that, do we? Let's sit that back up again. So we're going to be looking at the British instructions down here. Read label before use and all that other good stuff. And for some reason she does not want to focus. Maybe it's because we're slightly dark here. I don't know. Anyway, I'll read this off camera anyway. I suppose there's no there's no need for you guys to read this. And we're going to pour it out. And uh, I have been advised to apply it by roller. Let's bring it over here where there's some light. I was advised to apply, apply it by roller. But I'm not sure because obviously if you're painting something like this you've got to get in between the cracks where the tongue and groove are and you won't with a roller. So I think I'm going to apply it by brush. So we'll see how we get on. It feels like it's a bit thin. Yeah anyway, I'm, that's not making much of a good video is it because I'm reading the label while I've got the camera open. So. Let's just get it in a tub and start whacking it on the wood, eh? So we've managed to pull both tanks out. HLT first. It's been varnished and subsequently dried. I actually think it feels really nice. It's a quick drying varnish. I'm not sure how thick the coat is. It seems a little bit on the thin side. I've tried not to get too many drips, but even the drips have uh, have dried. And then the boil kettle, which kind of has, you know, been put through the mill for the past two or three years. And we decided uh, to take the banding off because it actually felt a little bit loose. So it's maybe time you know, as this wood has uh, dried out over the past few years to tighten it up and contract it a little bit. It wouldn't tighten up anymore, so it's going to have to be shortened somewhat. And then behind it, we can see this is behind the banding where beer has got behind and discoloured the wood. So we've had the... It's not up there, I've put it down here actually. I'll show you, just to prove it happened. No video, didn't happen. We've had the electric sander on there with a 120 grit uh, disc on. And I've gone around the midriff, the midriff of the band. And we've flattened it and taken it back down to a nice key, if you like. And then I've varnished it again. So this staining, that's going to live in the varnish now. But it isn't like mould or anything like that. It's just discoloration from where we probably have had uh, sugars and whatever on whatever else going on in the past. But at the moment, it is just discoloration. We can't take that out. Of course, we've got lighter areas where there's been no UV damage to the wood, and darker areas where we've had uh, monkey shit happening. <laughs> And then we're going to put the band, similar to this, back on. So the reason I took that one off is, you see the distance here between these two? I wanted to tighten the other one up a little bit, but they were already pinched. So what I'm going to do is put the whole thing on the welding bench. I'm going to cut out 
a two inch section of that band, cut and shut basically, close it up, weld it back together, then that should give us the wide section. We can all, all, almost go to three inches, I guess, but then we can pull this tight. So what that's actually doing is pulling the whole of the timber cladding onto the insulation, which is in between the timber cladding and the stainless steel tank proper. It's squeezing that together but it's also squeezing that onto the supports which exist on each leg. So these are little welded supports. They're the same on here. So they just come up and then they jut out a little bit and then we've put timbers on there. And then on those timbers, those timbers run from the top to the bottom. Then we have around the circumference of the tank if you've not been party to the manufacture of these each leg has that support timber and then around from one support timber to the next where each leg is and then we'll go around again next leg there we go there's another one around them these timbers are screwed on and held against gravity on the tank and around them we have hardboard making like a loop and then that hardboard gives us a base to screw on this matchboarding and we just basically add one piece of matchboard then another piece of matchboard and then another piece of matchboard and we go all the way around the tank you know cutting out for outlets and inlets and all that kind of thing until ultimately we have that's quite a mouthful said the actress to the bishop a fully clad tank so this one uh, the hlt seemed to be well sized the boil kettle not so much so we're just gonna have to do a little bit more work on that and cut it down so it can uh, it can grab it and finish it off anyway i hear the door rattling in the background so it would appear it is time for me to make a quick exit. Indeed, I'm correct. Yeah. We have a lift to go home. So let's sign off from today's vlog. What do we have to do, Jem? Sign off from today's vlog. <laughs> what we have to do is go down to the description and click on the link to vote for the Brew Shed and Harrison's Brewery in the North Knots Business Awards. You have to do it, otherwise I'm going to say it every single day until you've done it. And then while you're there, you may as well have a leap across to harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop and buy a couple of vacant gestures. So when you want to brew it for yourself at home, you can tell that it is the same as what we make. It never will be. But anyway, there we go. We'll see you. Have I got something else to look at? Yeah. The amazing artwork on the door. Why not? Gemma's got a little bit camera shy there, so we'll just pan across to um, yeah, this artwork that I did a year or two ago during lockdown. And uh, we will see you on the next vlog. Thank you very much.